Firstly, I'd like to just begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land in which we're podcasting today. I'd like to pay my respects and honour um, elders past, present and emerging. So thank you for joining us, Kayla. You're amazing. And Pearl, of course. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Thanks for having us. So hi, Lozzie. It's probably time for an afternoon nap, if I'm being honest. Yeah, <laughs> He's all right. Okay, we'll race through it. I um, know you <laughs> No, look, I really appreciate you jumping on with us today. Um, I wanted to do an interview with an icon with you just because you are iconic here, particularly in Australia. I think your career with the Australian team and in the WNBL and what you've been able to achieve has been epic. And um, I think now that I've been able to play alongside you, just get to know you a little bit the last year, I, I guess I can't really tell you how much you mean to basketball but to your teammates and the people that you know look up to you and um you know as a past opal you know i, I feel really um proud of you and what you've achieved particularly this last year so congratulations on everything before we start oh, um, my tear ducks oh my gosh <laughs> holy thank you dylan <laughs> no, anytime buddy um so i guess i just want to start with this 23 24 year um you went to Worlds, got a bronze medal, had a baby, went through the WNBL season, got WNBL MVP. Um, you signed with Las Vegas in the WNBA. You win a championship in the WNBA and in the last game where, you know, a couple of your teammates got injured, clutch teammates, starting teammates get injured and people are sort of thinking, yeah, New York will probably get this now. You step into the lineup and... You, in my mind, were the difference maker. You won that for them, that game for them, um, and therefore won the championship. No! And that is it! An unforgettable finish to game four! So, tell me about this last year. Like, how has it been for you? Yeah, it's been, honestly, as an athlete, like, we don't really reflect ever. We just go on to the next thing all the time. So when I get asked this question, I kind of, and I've been asked that a lot lately, because it has been such a big year and a bit, um, I actually have had a bit of time to reflect and I've needed to reflect because I've kind of come back to Australia and kind of fallen a bit flat on my face because it's just been so on the go the last year and a bit. Yeah. Um, so much success, which has been such a blessing that I've come back and just expected to roll into it and everything to be smooth. And it, it's been a little bit challenging. So um, it's just taken me a second to find my feet. So I'm in a bit of unfamiliar territory. Yes. Because I've had a bit of, you know, rolling momentum the last bit of time. So um, just trying to, you know, take it in my stride and one step at a time. And um, But, yeah, look, honestly, like, no better team than to rock the, the green and gold and the Australia across my chest. And I'm such a proud Aussie. And I like to think that I represent us as a people really well over in the States, as you did when you were over there. And... Um, I just, you know, love that we could do what we did and get back on the podium last year. That that was so special and it meant so much to all of us and especially the ones that were a part of the Tokyo campaign. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, to become a first-time mum, obviously through different circumstances of not having it myself, then to be able to come out and compete at a really high level at 34 years old. Um, and, I mean, I was 33 last year. Oh, what was I? Yeah, whatever I was, in my 30s. Yeah. And, and to compete when, you know, a lot of people, when you turn 30 as a female in any line of work, athlete or not, I guess, you know, when you're having kids or in as an athlete, you know, when are you retiring? And those questions started pumping out as soon as I turned 30. I was like, this is crazy. Like, the day before my birthday, this wasn't even a thing. Yeah. Now it's all of a sudden a thing. And um, I kind of put that to the wayside because it's not really what I was thinking about when I turned 30, retirement. And so then rolling around um, from that season, winning the MVP, and I called it the MV Pearl because it definitely was all her. Um, and then uh, it's all because of you. Thank you. Oh, she's like, stuff you. <laughs> um, and then to get the opportunity to go to, to Vegas and having an understanding of just like my role and being a little bit different. And that was really challenging. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, honestly. Super it's authentic fine. mum time. Yeah. Um, it was really challenging because. You know, I just come from probably playing the best basketball of my career and on such a high from World Cup to WNBL and then to have to just like sit on the pine for a little while. And I really went through it mentally. I'm not going to lie, Lozzie. Like I really had to 
find yeah. myself worth on my own or just through my husband just giving me props all the time and saying I'm all right, I'm okay. It was really challenging and I miss connections. Um, I feel like as Aussies we have a different level of connection that we're used to and um, I didn't have another Aussie there. I did have some good friendships there, no doubt, um, but I definitely miss like, you know, my usual connection. You know, and I'm in another country too, and, and Aces are quite a strong team because they've played together for a long time, they're core. So to make my find my way in that space, and once I found my way and, and you know, had, had some friendships and connections formed, then it made it a little easier. And then, um, you know, obviously just to having to be patient and, and staying ready is probably harder than playing 40 minutes, I think. Um, just in my experience, Absolutely. staying ready and staying focused on the game is, is definitely, and not having any idea when you're going in at any point, but always having to be ready um, is really challenging. And um, you know, I actually did know I was going to start two days before. Thank goodness. I had a bit of warning time to really prep my mind to Kayla OG so I could come in and be really confident and make sure I was the Kayla George that they needed and required for that game because they couldn't be the, the bench player that I had been, you know, and the nervous, anxious, don't make a mistake bench player. I, I had to come in and be the, the Kayla George starter and the, the yeah. Kayla George that I knew I could be. Um, I really wanted to be successful in that space and I didn't want to let anyone down as anyone would in my position in that in that moment. Um, so yeah. I was really fortunate to be able to, to deliver. Um, although my first couple of shots were a bit like how I uh, almost broke the backboard on the first one. But hey, it doesn't matter if I was one of six at halftime. I was told to let it fly. I had the biggest green light I've ever had in my life. Becky believed in me and so did my teammates. I had to I had to be aggressive, I had to be assertive. She said, if you second guess the shot, don't shoot it. She's like, when you get it, shoot it. If you're open, shoot it. I was like, okay. So I had yeah. to help make up for the loss of Chelsea. Uh, I mean, Kia wasn't super offensive um, focused. She was more of our defensive like anchor, but um, along with Asia. So it was more just about Alicia Clark and I coming in. And Alicia had had a lot of experience starting and been in the league for a long time anyway. This is only my fourth year. Um, but I have had experience in big games at Olympics and, and World Cups and and start in a lot of the big games. So I kind of just use that experience and and um, put one foot in front of the other. I tried not to look a Gucci roll on the sideline with Ted Lasso and Issa Rae, whoever else was there. I think Alicia Keys was in one of the games. I don't know. I, I just didn't even look. I just stayed really focused. And because like you said, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, the game's done. It's going to game five in, in Vegas and, and New York have got it. Like, you know, JJ's going to score 50 and 20 on Kayla. Well, psych, I didn't even guard her. Becky had me on Benaja. So <laughs> pop that in your pipe. Like that wasn't even the game plan. So. Um, it was really cool to, like, I still will always forever remember the moment. I think I was, yeah, there was like, in that last play, it was like eight seconds ago. She subbed me in. I was off for the last few minutes. They liked the defensive line. It was Sydney was coming out and annoying Sabrina. So they had Sydney on. And um, then I got subbed in for one inbound pass. I was like, oh, my gosh, do not hit the backboard. Just Asia is one of the easiest people to pass to because she's so damn athletic. So I just chucked it up for her and she nailed it. She probably got a foul on that too, but they didn't call it. Not a shocker, <laughs> but it's fine. Game's done, so we won. We're good. Um, and then um, that last play, I actually don't remember seeing the ball go up into the air. I don't remember seeing the buzzer go off. I couldn't see anything as people were standing in front of me. I was crouched on the ground, and all I saw was, like, Asia running towards us with her hands in the air. So I've jumped up like the most athletic gazelle I've ever been in my whole career, <laughs> even though I probably hurt my knees. And I, I did just all right. You know what it's like. You just run and jump on each other. It was so emotional, and um, it was such an experience honestly like and my mum was there my husband pearly um and that yeah. was really cool and that's such a huge high and i think you can appreciate like after big events like that or olympics i would say are probably even higher than that you, there's always a down after big events like that mm -hmm. like a big down wave mm -hmm. and i didn't really anticipate that for me because i was like no i didn't play i'm right like i hardly played the season i've been excited to go home and play like i'll be all right so i've got home and my expectation versus reality is kind of just hit me in the face because I'm, I'm kind of falling flat on my face a little bit just with, you know, my little yeah. bit of a lull, a lull experience, which I haven't had in, you know, a minute. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it's been a bit to get through and, um, you know, new team, new city, new everything. Um, but look, I'm, I'm feeling really good about being home first and foremost. Like I love I love being an Aussie and I'm reminded of that anytime I travel outside of Australia, I just am so proud to be an Aussie um, and I love, you know, living in this country. Um, and so... Yeah, I think I just answered your question. Yeah, you did. No, it was awesome. Listen, I, I don't know if this makes you feel any better, but um, after, so in 2010, we won the championship over in the WBA in Seattle and we had to fly directly to World Cup and I fell flat on my face during World Cup. You know, I just yeah. couldn't, I could not climb You can't help it. Yeah. No, 
I have no idea what happened. And um, gee, it was, oh my God, it was brutal, absolutely brutal. And that was the first time that I'd ever experienced it too. So I feel like um, I know exactly, you know, what you're going yeah. through. And it, like it's really hard, but you know. I've spoken I, to like Sammy and a few of the other girls. She experienced it after they won in 2018. She like went from that to the World Cup where we won silver and then she came to the WBO and similar, like kind of just feel like you've just got nothing in the tank. Yeah. And emotionally. And I'm such a like a, like an, I just, I love like getting hyped and I pass and a pass and I get an assist. I'm freaking hyped and I'm screaming at people hitting threes and I've just had nothing to even do that. And I'm like, what is yeah. wrong with me? Where's my spark? Where's my spark? So yeah. it's been definitely um, a tale of just like being patient with myself and giving myself some grace as you probably had to in that moment too. So, but it actually yeah. feels really good that you, not that you had that moment, that sucks, but that I'm not, I felt really isolated. Like, oh God, all eyes are on me. I just won a championship and I can't even freaking put one foot in front of the other. Like, oh, this is wild. No, no, no. I'm yeah. pretty you know sure what I mean? I felt like all eyes are on me. Like, yeah. Every athlete Crazy. that's been at the top of their game knows what the fall on the face feels like and it, it happens to everybody. So, yep, congratulations. Not pretty though. <laughs> Oh, it's hard. and It hits you harder. I think that makes it even worse, you know, the way that we're Because we're our own worst critic, right? So, like, yeah. just, it's hard. Yeah. 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 So, just, give you, right, give yourself some grace. Like, I'm going through that, too, with the WNBL, and I haven't even played for six months or eight months. So, it's like, don't right. even... Grace. Yeah. Grace, my friend. Um, yeah, well, look, I, you know, honestly, I just wanted to talk to you about that, really, and I guess just touch on the fact that you've been so instrumental, you know, in Australia for so long, and... I guess coming into next year, um, you know, it's going to be another massive year and I'm pretty sure you'll start to feel normal, you know, in the coming months. It'll, you know, it takes time. I already but, do a little bit. I feel a bit more settled. I've unpacked my bags in Sydney last yeah. week, so I'm good. Like, I feel better. Yeah. 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 It'll come. It always yeah. does. Um, Thanks, so much. Yeah. So heading into, you know, FIBA window in February and then, you know, into hopefully the Olympics, um, that's going to be a massive tournament for the Opals. Uh, I don't think people sort of understand how hard that is going to be. Brazil and Brazil, um, Serbia and Germany with uh, uh, Satu Sabali and her sister. It's like yeah. they're going to be... So it's going to be a really tough tournament for the Opals. Like, how are you feeling about it? I think tough with our opponents, but also tough with the travel to get there. It's probably yeah. like, I feel like we're so hard done by with where they send us for these things. I tell you what, like there was two European options that still were doing far, but like much easier for us to get to. But hey, we are a resilient bunch and we tackle yeah. any anything thrown at us. We always do. Um, no matter how it feels or how tired we get from the travel or whatever, we, we usually just get on with it because it's out of our control and that's just the beauty of being an Opal and you just, you know, represent as well as you can no matter what the circumstances are. And um, I feel really excited to play pending selection, obviously, for the green and gold again. Um, it's an honour every time. I, I never take it for granted as you feel the same, I know. Um, and, yeah, like we have some work to do, that is for sure there's, really tough teams waiting to to play us and and you know i'm excited like it, it's international basketball is where it's at and um you know we play with such a passion we're we're passionate people and um i just really yeah i can't wait to, to don the green and gold again uh, and and represent i think it's going to be a great time to showcase um you know our prep heading into a really important tournament uh, in Paris. Um, we've, we've got to compete at this one to compete at the next one, obviously. So, um, and the core group hasn't been together since the World Cup. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a really crucial tournament, and we need to make sure, first and foremost, that our culture is really on point and that we're all really connected. And and I think um, our leadership group do a really good job of that. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Well, I guess, look, all I just want to say is congratulations. Like, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you've got a play tonight. And Oh, you're totally you know. fine. Ask away. If you've got other questions, let's ask. We're good. Pearl's good. I mean, I was going to ask, I guess, just what, like, what, when did you start playing? Like, what age were you when you started playing? So I was, I played netball first, a um, bit of skirtball. And then at nine, a coach approached mum and was like, hey, she plays, like, netball I know but she want to play basketball too like <laughs> give it a go and so I tried basketball and then a couple of years I did both for a while as my sister did and then when my mum and dad separated it was really difficult for my mum to um 
just take us to everything, afford everything. That like sports expensive. It's even more expensive now. Like, um, so she's like, I just asked us to choose one sport. My sister chose netball just for a little while, and then I chose basketball, and I haven't looked back. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was on like softball, swimming. I was on everything. Like it was yeah. nuts. Yeah, and school sport as well. Like you just do. Yeah, everything. exactly. So, um, what what did you love about the sport? I loved. I remember why I chose basketball I love the contact factor and that we could go all over the court and that there was a backboard and I could dribble and I just <laughs> I loved all that stuff when I was younger but now my love would be probably um feel and that when I'm playing in a joyous state I, I find I play at my best when I have joy um and I like to make sure people around me are thriving and that's how I have my joy when other people around me are thriving I thrive um and so in saying that the connections I have with people are probably why I love the game yeah, right. So becoming a mum, right? Like how has that changed what you do and prepare for like every single day, every single game training and stuff? Like how has that changed you? So in my early 20s, I would always be like, okay, so I've got to listen to the same same music every game. I've got to put my left sock on before my right, take my right from my left, make sure my shoelaces are done up, are done up properly the way I like, not too tight, not too loose. I count a little bit. I have OCD a little bit, so I would count, wipe my shoes four times. Like, like I would just be nuts. As athletes, we have to be a little bit crazy, I think, to do what we do. And so there's like a lot of stuff that goes on and a lot of superstitious stuff. And I would, I would be a big counter because that was my thing. I still do a little bit in my time now, but it's definitely not as bad as what it was in my early 20s. Um, but with Pearl, like I don't think about really the game at all. Like I've hardly thought about the game at all today until you said, oh, you got a game. So oh, we had two rounds this morning. But I was like, oh, yeah, like I know the scout. Like I've been around a long time. I know a lot of the players. Uh, you know, when guy, guys like I've been with Guy a long time, so I know what he likes. I know what positions I need to be in tonight. Like I'm already kind of mentally prepped earlier because today's about making sure Pearl has a good feed, has a good sleep, getting a <laughs> snack box ready for the game, who's looking after at the game, organising that, making sure they're comfortable on the bench. Um, you know, and like if in the game something was needed, if Pearl needs to change and, you know, my cousin wasn't comfortable who's looking after us tonight changing her, then I'd, you know, sub out and change it. Like she's yeah. my full priority over everything. So if she starts crying and someone needs me to come off, like I'm running off, sorry, guy, like get me out of here. I need to, I need to go be with Pearl. So um, it definitely just changes your perspective on everything. Like you're not concerned. As yeah. athletes, we're so selfish, even though we're not selfish people, but to achieve what we want to achieve in our life, we, we have been at moments, if not all the time, hella selfish. Because, oh, like, yeah. if you're not, then how do you get anything done? So with her, like, she's taking up all my time now and it's so healthy for me mentally, especially when I was going through this, like, little rough patch this last month or so where, you know, I didn't want to think about basketball because it kind of made me feel some type of way because I just needed to mentally just, like, switch off instantly when I left a basketball court. i just be a mum. And a mum to yeah. my dogs, a mum to Pearl, and just like be with my family, and and it just brings me so much joy. You know, those little things in life, and you can appreciate. Like, I get sometimes asked, like, "Oh, where's your favourite holiday destination?" It's like home, because <laughs> I'm never there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Cairns, I love going home to Cairns. That's my yeah. holiday. Um, so, and you can obviously appreciate that because you spend a lot of time away from home in your successful career too. So, um, but yeah, Pearl has. She just brings so much light to the group and I think she just has such impact with everyone and she smiles at someone and just makes their whole day. Like she's just such a, a sweetheart and she's been, only been around amazing elite women, yeah, great humans and, and athletes. And she's got all these aunties all over the world. I mean, Aces and Sydney love posting her. Like she's more famous than bloody me, mate. I'm not famous at all. She's bloody well-known everywhere. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, she's got a nature on her. That's for sure. That's what I see. Yeah. I've you know, been around her that much. Um, yeah, look, I get that. I fully get it. Um, look, thank you very much for just sharing part of your incredible journey this last year with us. Um, oh, no dramas. And we love you. And, yeah, we just want to keep watching you thrive, both on and off the court. And, uh, um, thank you, Lizzie. You're gorgeous. Thank you, Don. I can't wait to see you and give you a big squeeze. Maybe after you shower that, that tan off, though. Yeah, it's a bit gross, mate. It's a bit gross. <laughs> It'll be great once you have a shower. <laughs> hey, look, it's the post-COVID tan. I swear to God, the first thing I did when I got out of lockdown today was literally go and get a tan. So Yeah, I need one. I'm looking a bit pasty. I haven't been outside enough. I've been in all summer environments and I haven't been outside enough. What is wrong with me? 